Casa Grande Junior and Senior High School opened in 1972 with approximately 70 acres of land. The school was still under construction on the first day when 1,000 students were expected to attend. At the time, Casa Grande included 7th and 8th grade. The construction of Casa Grande helped alleviate the overcrowding of Peluma High School on the west side of town. Casa Grande, meaning big house in Spanish, got its name from General Vallejo's adobe, which is located approximately one mile away from the school's campus. The adobe was a resting stop for the local ranchos in the 1800s. The first graduation was also at the adobe. In quirky Petaluman fashion, the school held a fundraiser in order to construct new sports fields and a new track. A field on Casa Grande's campus was divided into one-by-one-yard squares in which participants could bet on where a local cow, owned by one of the student's parents, would deposit its manure. $2,000 was paid out to the winner and construction began. Additionally, since the school's founding, Casa Grande has benefited from the addition of a cafeteria, a gym, and a library as well as a student store, counseling building, and a technical arts center. It has been the teachers at Casa Grande that have been the most instrumental in creating its history and shaping its future. In the 1980s, Casa Grande teacher Tom Furr began raising funds to start the Anglers, a class where life biology students can help keep the local fish population stable. This important program continues to this day. Casa Grande's history continues to be influenced by our dedicated students and teachers. So we decided we were going to interview five teachers. My name's Todd Creighton. I've been teaching at Casa Grande for my, this is my 16th year. Casa since 1992. Um, I've been here for 18 years. I've been here for like 27 years. Been working at Twenty-one years. We asked them questions to see what we could find out about our school's history. These were their responses. I started. I did my student teaching here in 1989, and then I just stayed. Uh, I never knew Casa existed until I got an interview. Uh, and uh, when I came here, I entered the doorway to this classroom. Uh, I've been here ever since. I didn't want to be a teacher at first, and when I went back to school to become a teacher, I was told I couldn't uh, do like my student teaching here because I went to school here. So I ended up actually having to do it over at Pebble High. They were the first people who offered me a job. What? No. Well, I sort of... I kind of told you, but yeah, I didn't want to be a teacher. Both my parents were teachers, so it was like, no. I knew that if I wanted to uh, be a teacher, that this is where I would remain. No, I had no idea. I didn't have any vision for myself other than survival. Any first-year teacher would know this. I had to keep my head above water, and I just tried to do, I just focused exclusively on school, just to be the best teacher I could be. I worked so hard. Well, once I got the job, I kind of figured I'd stay here because unless I moved out of the area, I wasn't, I wasn't close enough to retirement. I mean, I probably still have another five, ten years left. Uh, so hopefully I'll still have some more time left. It, it doesn't seem like I've been here that long until, you know, you sit down and you realize, I, I've been here 16 years. I taught uh, world history, U.S. history, AP, U.S. history, economics, government, uh, AP government, uh, legal studies, uh, and the expectations over time, um, they've changed a bit. To, I think the clusters change things to some extent. So when I started teaching, they told us that, that what we really needed to do is to be able to teach more than one subject. I have a degree in art. I have a, a credential to teach art, and I have a credential to teach English. In the first few years, I taught um, the R1 class. That's all there was. And then I also taught freshman English for two or three years. These days you have to teach only in the subject that you have the major in. CASA always gives its teachers, and it's always been this way, uh, the opportunity to develop like their own classes, their own program. And departments are usually really supportive of that. It's sort of like, if you want to teach that, it's fine as long as I don't have to teach it. And 
that. So as a teacher, it's been awesome to be here because any department you have that ability to create something new if you want to if you want to go for it. Okay. Well, I've taught um, ancient history. I've taught medieval history. I've taught world history. I've taught honors world history. I've taught a push. I've taught U.S. history with Miss um, Couch as my teaching partner. I've taught regular U.S. history. I've taught government, I've taught economics, I've taught eco-eco-ecological economics, I've taught comparative religions, I've taught women's history, I've taught media studies, um, I've taught a biology world history combo called eggs, which I don't even remember what it stands for at this point, uh, just to name a few off the top of my head. Uh, prior year, I taught three periods of physical science, one period of honors physical science, and one period of physics. Since that time, I've taught uh, astronomy and chemistry in addition to the other courses. Um, I haven't taught physical science in a while, but those are the courses I've taught here. So what's changed at CASA? When Mr. O'Brien and I were here, we didn't even have a football field. CASA played all their football games at Petaluma High. It's technology. Um, we have, it, you know, the internet was here at the time, but it was maybe one or two computers in a classroom. Styles have changed. Uh, clothing has changed. Uh, there was the great pizza caper where one day I was absent, I was teaching the Emory. And so the next day my students told me that they tried to order pizza. The climate of the country does change uh, the experience in the classroom. Uh, I feel that uh, this last year or so there's been a lot more tension my perception is that students are stressed based on uh, the external political events of the country. You know, some of the campus classrooms were not where they are now. The, the structure of the school is different. And they, they said that they snuck out of the classroom, so didn't see them, and they had to go below all the other classrooms. The biggest change has been progressive, and it's been around electronic devices. So when I first started teaching, uh, the biggest thing were Walkmans. So I had to crawl and they were like singing the Mission Impossible theme song, da 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 And they reached up for the, because it was a phone in the middle of the pod, right? And they dialed the pizza place and the pizza place asked for the address. They didn't know it. Those morphed into iPods and then those turned eventually into cell phones. And uh, nobody had computers when we started. There were no cell phones in the early said to them, well, you guys have made two mistakes. Number one, you're dumb. And number two, you just told me, so thus all the secrecy is blown. You deserve everything you get. They were more individualistic. I think they were more, I think they were frankly more unique. It really hasn't changed. It's still kind of the same students, just with new technology. So, I think that, that the between 92 and now in 2017, we've seen, or at least I feel like I've seen a comeback because I notice now that my students are more willing to own their mistakes and own that they don't, they're not doing something and not pushing the blame off on their parents or other teachers or work. Uh, and when I first started, uh, there was, the Latino population was pretty small and it grew significantly, I would say, in the mid-90s. And there was a lot of tension on campus. They were more violent. Uh, there was more tension, more racial tension. They were more outwardly racist. I, I would never say that we don't have racism. Of course we do. But they were outwardly racist and absolutely outwardly homophobic um, and sexist. The immigrants, you know, new people coming in, it was going to change how things are. And then eventually it was just like, oh, this is how it is. I had no expectations. I had no idea what it would be like. Well, I had taught for 14 years before I came here, and I always taught on a schedule of six classes a day, five days a week, every class met every day. And that's how I went to high school. And so I, I thought it was going to be just like that. So I was a little bit surprised when that wasn't the case. And I thought I could handle it, and I couldn't. It was very difficult for me to adjust. Our student body is 
much more respectful toward people as a general. Well, like I said, the, the I think electronic devices has really changed people's behavior over time. That's been the most profound thing that has changed. Other than that, people are people. I would say some of the best moments I had teaching were when I was teaching, um, working with my English language learning kids, and because they're trying so hard to learn English and trying to adapt to our culture and trying to understand what is going on. There's always a time as a teacher, almost daily, when you're teaching something and you see the light bulb go off in the kid. The kid goes, yeah, I get it. Uh, a couple years ago, I had a kid, they were from Iran, he spoke Farsi. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of Farsi translations. Major breakthroughs happen rarely, but sometimes you just, you teach something, you think you did a lousy job, and then they do great on their tests and their quizzes. But I've had the opposite happen too, but man, I nailed that lecture. I really taught him well, and then you see in the test and quiz, it was not the way. So you, you measure your success over a course of not one day or one event, but over the course of a year. I think CASA will continue to be a fantastic school. I hope that through this short film, Casa Grande's history will be remembered. Thank you for watching. Oh, oh, oh,